kind of pollution causes damage to electronics? Static rain. <laughs> okay. The real answer, of course, is EMI. Good old electrostatic interference. EMI can wreak all sorts of havoc on electronic designs. It can cause test failure, the need for retrofitting, which absolutely no one wants, and even the dreaded redesign. So we look at EMC, or electromagnetic compatibility solutions, to protect our designs from the dangers of EMI. Think of it as an EMI umbrella of sorts. But if we're keeping performance and compliance in mind, what kind of EMI shielding and EMC gaskets should we use? I'm glad you asked, because that's exactly what we're talking about today. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Electromagnetic interference can cause a variety of costly issues and can be avoided with a robust EMI shielding solution. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Sam Robinson from TE Connectivity and I discuss the role that EMC gaskets play in EMI shielding how compression can affect EMI shielding, and how TE connectivity can help solve your EMI shielding needs in your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from TE connectivity. Hi, Sam. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi there. Okay, so we're talking about EMC gasket design considerations and gasket materials today. But Sam, before we dig into the details, tell me a little bit about yourself. Sure. So my name's Sam Robinson, and I'm a product manager with T Connectivity. So I have an engineering background, and I've got 20 years experience in sales and the EMI shielding industry. I studied for my engineering degree at Coventry University in the UK, and I'm a member of the Institute of Engineering and Technology. Excellent. Okay. So, Sam, as a primer for today's discussion, can you explain the difference between EMI, electromagnetic interference, and EMC, electromagnetic compatibility? Sure. So, electromagnetic interference can be thought of as a form of pollution that can affect electronic equipment that's not protected from it. You can think of it as an electromagnetic smog. So EMI can cause effects ranging from annoying noises on your car radio all the way up to the failure of a safety critical system. Electromagnetic compatibility, EMC, is what our customers need to achieve. So this is the ability of a device equipment or system to function satisfactorily in its electromagnetic environment and without introducing electromagnetic disturbance to anything else in that environment. Fantastic. Now, Sam, here on Chalk Talk, we've talked a lot about EMI in the past, but can you give us a refresher on what exactly EMI shielding is? Sure. So EMI shielding refers to the attenuation in reflection or absorption of electromagnetic radiation through the use of a material that acts as a shield against it. So for radiated emissions, this can be achieved by using materials and components that will create a Faraday cage around the electronics. So this can be achieved at the enclosure level, or it be achieved within the unit at a module level, or it could be achieved at the PCB level. So Sam, we're seeing a huge increase in the need for EMI shielding, right? And this is across a whole lot of different markets, correct? Yes, that's correct. So we're seeing an increase in the need for EMI shielding across all the market sectors shown on this slide. Really, this is driven by a real increase in the electronic systems being used in each of these sectors and also an increase in the speed and frequencies of that electronics, which makes EMI shielding a more challenging problem. Absolutely. Now, when should we start thinking about EMI shielding in our design cycle? So different types of application will require different solutions with different EMI shielding options. So we would urge customers to consider the EMI gasket requirements as early as possible in the design stage. So this will ensure that they allow sufficient land area for the gasket to be incorporated into the solution. That makes sense. Now, can you talk a bit about the role that compression plays in the type of gasket we need here? Yes, so compression is an important design consideration. 
So different types of gasket material can offer different levels of compression. So it's important to select the material that will accommodate the gap and the tolerances of the application, but also without being over-compressed. Over-compressing of an EMI gasket can cause damage, and this can reduce the shielding effectiveness. But another important point is that different gasket materials have different hardnesses and they require different levels of closure force. So you need to ensure that the assembly is sufficiently rigid to be able to compress the gasket or deflect the gasket uh, without bowing. So you can see the, the picture on the left is an example where if the assembly isn't sufficiently rigid when it's closed down, you'll get bowing between the fixing points. Uh, you'll get a gap forming and this will reduce the shielding effectiveness. That makes sense. Now, how is this compression limited? The compression, often it can be limited. This can be limited by the design of the metalwork of the assembly itself. However, if that's not possible, we can also incorporate it into the gasket. So we can add either a collar into the whole position of the gasket, or we can add two compression studs either side of each hole location. And Sam, different types of EMI gaskets have different levels of effectiveness, right? Can you explain that a bit? Sure. So different gasket materials can offer different levels of shield and effectiveness, and it also varies across the frequency range. So for example, knitted wire mesh offers very good levels of shielding at lower frequencies. At higher frequencies, above a gigahertz, the shielding effectiveness starts to drop. Whereas conductive elastomers offer very high shielding performance across a wide range of frequencies, and they can offer 100 dB of shielding above 10 gigahertz. So another design consideration is whether or not the EMI gasket also needs to provide an environmental seal. So for some applications, the only requirement is an EMI seal. But for many applications, the gasket needs to also provide uh, some form of environmental protection. So this can be offered with the gasket. We have several options we can offer. So, for example, knitted wire mesh, not on its own, but this can be incorporated with an environmental seal. And then both oriented wire and conductive elastomers can offer a high level of environmental sealing. Okay, so what about the materials of the enclosure and the gasket? Do they need to be made of the same material? In certain environmental conditions, if you have dissimilar materials in contact with each other, this can cause what's known as galvanic or biometallic corrosion. This corrosion will increase the surface resistance, which will reduce the shielding performance. So if the application is going to be in an environment where galvanic corrosion is a concern, it's important to match as closely as possible on the galvanic scale, the EMI gasket material and the mating surface material. So this is why many of our EMI gasket materials are offered with different material options. Oh, okay. So when it comes to EMI, what would you like my audience to keep in mind? So if we look at the watts, consider EMI shielding and gasket requirements early in the design stage. There are many parameters to evaluate to select the best EMI gasket option. And there's no single EMI gasket type that will be the best option for every application. If we look at the why, this is to ensure that the design meets the EMC requirements. It's to ensure that the most cost-effective solution is adopted. And it's to ensure that the EMI shielding solution meets other requirements of the design, such as environmental sealing. And then if we look at the consequences of not considering EMI, you could have EMC test failure, which could be expensive and it could cause a need for retesting and time delays. It could require a retrofit solution, which is often more expensive than um, designing a gasket in early on in the design. And it could also require complete redesign of the unit to be able to accommodate the gasket, which would cause further additional cost and delay. So, Sam, what kind of gaskets does TE offer? So we offer a range of EMI gaskets. These could be broken into three groups. So we offer knitted wire mesh gaskets, electrically conductive elastomers, and we offer oriented wire in silicone. Let's talk about that knitted wire mesh. Can you give me some more details on these materials? Sure. So knitted wire mesh products, as the name suggests, it is a wire that's knitted into a gasket material. It's a cost-effective gasket material. It's very robust and it offers excellent shielding performance. So we offer this product with four different wire types, Monel, TCS, stainless steel, and aluminium. There is a difference in the shielding performance between these. 
but also, as discussed earlier, offering different wire material types allows uh, engineers to select the most suitable material from a galvanic point of view to make a good galvanic match between the gasket material and the mating surface. So these gaskets are available in a range of different profiles, so we can offer it as a solid mesh cord. These are available in a range of different profiles, and we can also offer this product knitted over elastomeric cores. Now, having the um, gasket knitted over a core allows us to produce a larger gasket and also a more conformable gasket. So the knitted mesh over a core produces a gasket which is soft and conformable, suitable for repeated openings and very flexible. So in addition to those products as strip, we can also incorporate um, an environmental seal with the knitted mesh and we can provide custom designs where we provide a custom fabricated gasket. So tell us a bit more about the conductive elastomer materials you spoke of earlier. When would you consider using this type of material? So conductive elastomers are a high performance material. They're highly conductive and they offer high levels of uh, shielding performance. They have an excellent temperature range. They have good resistance to compression sets. They can also be used to form a very good environmental seal. So these gaskets are often used for military and aerospace applications as well as commercial applications. So the materials themselves, they're based on either a silicone or a fluorosilicon binder. We offer fluorosilicon because this will offer resistance to fuels and oils. To this binder, we incorporate a conductive particle filler. So there are a range of different fillers available. The most commonly used are nickel-plated graphite and silver-plated aluminium. Then the materials are available in a range of different options. So we can provide conductive elastomer O-rings. We can extrude the material and provide it as a cord or hollow profile. We can provide it as a sheet material. We can provide die-cut flat gaskets. And we can also provide molded components with the conductive elastomer. And now moving on to the third type of material. So we have a group of materials known as oriented wires in silicone. So these materials offer excellent shielding, they're cost effective, and they can also provide an environmental seal. So oriented wires in silicone, again, they have different binder options. So we can offer either a silicone or a fluorosilicon binder. But these materials differ from conductive elastomers in that the conductive path is produced by a matrix of wires which are laminated into the material in the z-axis. So this is a flat gasket material. It's ideal for small flat gaskets, for connectors, larger flat gaskets, and we can also fabricate this into very large gaskets. It's available as stock sheet material. It's available in strip, or we can provide it as a die cut or fabricated gasket. This material is also available with or without self-adhesive backing. Fantastic. Now, what benefits does TE bring to the table when it comes to EMI solutions? So T Connectivity offer an extensive product portfolio. We aim to work with our customers to form long-term partnerships. We offer a high level of engineering expertise and engineering support to our customers, and we have a global footprint. Excellent. Well, Sam, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from TE Connectivity. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.